Hi there, I'm David Kidwell, conductor of the Holyoke Civic Symphony. The first concert of our new season is coming up on Sunday, October 22nd at 3 p.m. at Holyoke Community College. The main piece on the program is the Violin Concerto of Johannes Brahms, and I want to talk for a little bit about how the solo violin part was written. So Brahms's main instrument was the piano. He could certainly write for other instruments in an orchestral context, but how would he go about writing a virtuosic solo violin part if he didn't play the violin himself? Now fortunately, Brahms was good friends with Josef Joachim, one of the preeminent violinists of the 19th century. Brahms wrote his own solo part, gave it to Joachim, who proceeded to make all sorts of changes to it. And you can actually see these changes because the Brahms manuscript is at the Library of Congress. You can see it online and you can see all these red pencil marks which were done by Joachim. A lot of times he would just X out what Brahms wrote and write in his own solo part. Now this kind of makes you wonder about the compositional process itself. Where does the composer leave off and the performer begin. Where is the dividing line there? And is Joachim's music better than Brahms's music simply because it's more idiomatic for the instrument? Ron Gravik, our soloist for the Brahms, has a unique perspective on this. Last season, Ron was the soloist for the Brahms double concerto for violin and cello. Now, the double concerto was written after Brahms had had a falling out with Joachim. So the solo part is entirely Brahms. There's no input from Joachim. So how do the two parts differ? Here's what Ron had to say. Okay, so, you know, most great composers, unless they actually play the instrument, they usually work with a, a person who plays the instrument in order to help them achieve their goals. And Brahms with the violin concerto worked extensively with Joachim, and Joachim, of course, was a composer in his own right and wrote his own violin concerto. So I think Joachim was very helpful, even though, don't get me wrong, the, the violin concerto is not easy, but it falls much more naturally than the double concerto does, because at that time Brahms was not speaking to Joachim. And I'm trying to remember what the reason was. It was something to do with a woman, I believe, who Joachim married, that Brahms was uh, rather fond of. And then in order to get friends with Joachim again, Brahms wanted to surprise him with a double concerto and wrote both the cello part and the violin part, I believe, without consulting with them. So it is definitely more klutzy, more awkward, not unplayable at all, but just not, you can feel the lack of a violinist's input in, in the piece, as, and, and you can feel the violinist's input in the violin concerto even though, of course, it's all Brahms' ideas. So I think that's the essential difference between the, the two pieces. This concert will also include Rossini's Barber of Seville Overture, Henry Cowell's Hymn and Fuguing Tune Number no. 3, which the orchestra performed 51 years ago in its very first season, and a piece by a friend of mine, Lauren Bernofsky, with the wonderfully evocative title Ode to a Forgotten Past. We're also planning to have a video chat with Lauren right before the performance. So I hope you'll join me on Sunday, October 22nd at 3 p.m. at Holyoke Community College. It's a free concert, but donations are always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the audience.